is the modern insulator collector here, slash Angry Birds Freeze King, and I present to you my insulator collection video number three. Today I will be showing you my additional insulator since I've done my last video. And as you can see here, I have obtained a lot of stuff. Um, one thing I'm going to mention to you before um, we start is the giveaway. If any of you watched my last video, I mentioned to you that I was probably going to do a giveaway of some sort. And the reason being is because I have a lot of duplicate insulators and you will be seeing a lot of duplicates as I do this video. And unfortunately, those insulators will take up space. And one thing I've learned from bringing these in is that these have taken up a lot of room, and this isn't even like the the, the la like the rest of the collection. Like there's more stuff outside, um, so like there wasn't even enough room to bring everything in. So, um, but anyway, about that, I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. I'm probably just gonna s put them up online, and I'll probably put a link um for sale because I would like to at least get rid of them and give them to a collector who will take good care of them. Anyway, as you can see, since my last video, I have obtained quite a lot of stuff. And um, I got a lot of uh, ceramic and porcelain. You know, I got some rubber insulators, some modern plastic here that I'll be going over. And unfortunately for the glass fans, I don't have a lot of glass, but we'll still be going over that. I got a couple of new fog bowls and some blue insulators and some unique pieces, too. <clears throat> so... And as you can see, this one right here, which is in the review, is broken. That was my fault. So, and yeah, so since this is an addition, you know, to the second videos, a lot of the insulators here on the shelf and some of the others you're seeing, like, I'm sure you recognize some of these ones from, like, the first video. Um, I'm not going to really talk about those because, and if you want to listen to me talk about those, you can just go to my first video, which I'll put at the end of the video. So there's a couple things I'm not going to be discussing, like these glass ones here, and then uh, these, which you've probably seen from the last video I did, which was the second. So, anyway, there's a lot to go over, so I have everything lined up in a group, so I'm probably just going to start here and go around the circle and get over there, and then I'll jump over outside to some big stuff I have. I have some really big balance leaders that they use on like the high transmission lines. Just go up along. Each, each one and just tell you what they are. And just so you know, this may be a really long video. I'd recommend getting a snack, um, getting comfortable, and just lay back and watch the video. So, I'm gonna start over here. First of all, I got these telegraph insulators in the front here. And they're really cool. A lot of these I got from, and a lot of these small insulators, I'll just mention real quick, a lot of them I gotten from an insulator convention that I actually went to right after I did the second video and that was back in like February and that was that was terrible looking in that video by the way <laughs> but anyway anyway I'm gonna go over a lot of the duplicates I'm just gonna name off I'm not gonna kinda zoom in too much but I think over here we got our first one and this one's a lap telegraph insulator I like the logo on it it's really neat um, a lot of the ones that you see right here I got some duplicates in some different colors I'm not going to go over these ones too much. These ones are all no name. All this until right here, I believe. I may be wrong. I think that one's also a no name. If we move over just a little bit, you can see I got some more. I think we have some other ones. Let's keep going. These ones are all no names. It's about right here. This one right here, starting here, is a Pinco, as you can see. It's very cool. There's spider web on the bottom. We move over into here, and now these ones are Ohio brass ones. You can't really see the logo very well, but it's right there. And the same right, same right there. These are Ohio brass ones until we get to this one. And this one's a little bit newer, but um, this is 1978, I believe, on it. This one's a porcelain product uh, Knox insulator. Really cool. It's definitely modern, and you can tell because it has a radio treatment. So I don't know what they'd use that for, but um, yeah. Um, now we're over to some of the uh, pin insulators with the uh, lap on the bottom. I like these ones a lot. We have a few no names up here. These two don't have names. I don't think this one has a name either. 
Yeah, these ones are also no names until we get to these ones. Now these are some of the bigger ones I have. These ones are made by Lockie. That's not really a good example because that one wasn't printed well. A lot of the ones, unfortunately, I have are not printed. As you can see, it's very, very poorly printed. Anyway, they're all Lockie. And then if we jump over here, this one is a porcelain product from, I think, it's just 1950 something on it. It's hard to tell when the lid was screwed up. Got some more. I got another Lockie. These ones, by the way, I think are Lockie high tops. Hey, look. Yeah, these are Lockie high top um, 77s. Over here, we got another one. This one's an Ohio brass. Really nice. Got some more Lockie high tops. Keep going. These ones, I think, are Ohio brass. I think this one's an Ohio brass. And the other one may be a silent type, yep. So, even though these are both exactly the same, they, you know, they're, they have different names for some reason. And I don't understand the reason for that. But, here's another Lockie one. That one's poorly printed, so I don't know what type it is, but this one's kind of lopsided. As you can see, this one is a Westinghouse. Got a couple Westinghouse ones right here. And these are like the uh, triangle-shaped ones. Which I don't have a lot of in my collection. Sorry if I sound stuffy. The weather here has been terrible. This pin insulator doesn't have a name. I don't think this one has a name either. Nope. Very awesome. I like it. It's very uh, fat too. That one doesn't have a name, but it has this marking up here, which I don't know what it means. Come over the more of our triangle shaped ones. That one does not have a name. You know, you think this one right here is a pin co, but this one don't have a name either. A lot of these don't have names. Um, right here, but this one right here is a Thomas Insulator. Very beautiful. I like the glaze color. Here's some newer style ones. We got Porcelain Product Knox. That one doesn't have a year or anything on it. Got another one. These two, I think I, I think these two are from an antique shop. We got almost a slate bluish one. It's very white, but it's a Chance made in the 90s. Chance Insulator. Oh yeah, and real quick, and this one's uh, Chance 1959, that one's really nice. If any of you have seen this logo, if you're wondering what the number in the middle means, that's technically the year, I believe. So I think that one right there was made in the 90s. We got, this one right here is actually a new one. Um, I don't know how new this is. It doesn't have a date on it, but... Um, I met some linemen, and they, this was actually some new hardware they decided to give me that I don't know why they had. So that insulator hasn't been used yet. This one's nice, a lap 1930. I got a couple more laps. These ones are not marked, but I do believe that they're lap. This one's also lap. Unfortunately, you can't see the name very well. It blends in super well. This one's a lap 1928. Got some Pinco over here. If you've seen my first one, my first video, you probably have seen this insulator before, but I've obtained another one. Let's see. This one right here, I knew how to logo. This one, the logo's up here. I don't know if I can focus it, but if you can see that triangle, it's a line, that's actually a line material logo. So that one right here is made by line material. This one is also made by line material. It's kind of shady logo. These two right here are made by Jeffrey Dewitt. Very amazing. And one thing if you've probably noticed from my last video is I've learned a lot more names since then. I've been doing more history and research. So that's another Jeffrey Dewitt. It's JD. If you want to call it JD, that's cool too. This one's IEP. I don't know what that one stands for. But it's kind of hard to see. It's very, uh, very saturated with glaze. But very beautiful. Here's a couple that I've gotten off some poles that they've taken down here. These ones are Knox Insulators. It's kind of hard to see the logo. Very beautiful. I've got quite a lot of them too. So I got one, two, three, and I think this one's also a Knox. This one's slightly different, yep. That one's a Knox. This one, okay. It's kind of hard to see. It's the logo right here. This one is actually made by Porcelain Products. And I say that because it looks kind of like some of these other insulators here. This one's also a porcelain product. Um, the logo on this one is not anywhere visible. But 
One, and one way you can tell if they're made by certain companies is the style too. So we got some more porcelain product insulators. Got lots of them right here. You can see the logo extremely well on that one. I think this one's also, I don't know, this one's not a porcelain product. Here's another triangle shaped one. I like the bottom of it. This one's made by Pinco. Pinco-1. This one's also made by Pinco. There's a lot of these actually up in Michigan. Um, I think near uh, the southeast side towards South Bend. They're owned by Mich in Michigan in Indiana, Michigan Power, excuse me. Here's another Pinco. I think a lot of these right here are Pinco. Yep, they are. Got some duplicates. These ones I've gotten from here, Cincinnati, but from some Pulsey taken down. You don't see a lot of the small insulators like that here. Usually you'll see ones this size, and we'll get to those in a minute. Got some more. These are all Pinco except, wait, here's another Lockheed High Top 77. This one's beautiful. It's in an orange. Can we go up a little bit. Got some Lockheed insulators. This one's a Lockheed number two. It's probably a second uh, version insulator. Got some more Lockheeds here. All these in this row are Lockheed insulators. This one, I'll show the names real quick too. I'm not going to read them off, but they have visible names. That one's not very good. Unfortunately, a lot of the locky ones here are kind of hard to read. Okay, we're going to keep going. Now we're over into some of the Ohio brass stuff. As you can see, there's a white Ohio brass. That one's also an Ohio brass, and we're wondering where the logo is. It's right there. Quite nice. These two are exactly the same. They're just different glaze colors. Well, this one's the same as those two, except for the top. It's a little skinnier. Keep going. Got some more Ohio brass. There we go. A couple of them, I believe, are silent types, but that might be up the row. There's another one. Here's an Ohio brass. Very beautiful. This one's nice. Let me find the logo. There it is. Very awesome. Got some more. Now I have hundreds of these Ohio brass ones. These ones are very popular here in Cincinnati and in other states. A few of these I've gotten here, and some of them I've actually gotten up in Michigan. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six Ohio brass insulators of this style. And I think it's this one also in Ohio brass. Maybe, maybe not. Yep. Got another triangle shaped one. I don't know if those have names or not. Now we're into some of the Lockheed High Tops. This one right here came from Michigan. Michigan has more of the short, stumpy topped ones. This one's a high, Lockheed High Top 66, and so are the rest. These ones I got from a convention. I've gotten a lot of duplicates, so if I do the giveaway, then you might see some of these. These are very nice insulators. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've gotten ten of those insulators right there. Now we're going to move on into some of the slightly bigger pin insulators. One size up, I'd say. This one, very awesome. This one's a lap insulator. I think this one's a little bit more newer than this one. And one thing I like about these the, these pin insulators and this size is usually they only have one lap under them. But the cool thing about these ones is they have two laps. And this one right here is also, like I said, the lap. And this one actually has a name on it. Very beautiful. This one's a darker tone orange, and this, this one's a lighter tone orange. I don't know what brand this one is, but I think it's a Pinco. Very beautiful. And this one I actually got out of a dumpster where they were throwing away insulators over in Ohio, down here in Ohio. Not in the Duke Energy area, but in a different area of Ohio. Very nice. It has that extra lap under there that I like a lot. These ones I think are lap insulators, because I can tell because of the orange that they use. <coughs> Excuse me. Very nice. It has the extended um, base. This one's the same, just nice um, darker red. We got a couple Lockies over here. This one's not a Lockie. I don't, I don't know if this one has a brand name or not, not that I can see. Great insulator though. It's um, it ha this one has double lapped so where these ones over here are single, so it's very awesome, quite nice. This one's no namer. This one's a Lucky High Top, and I believe it's right here. Unfortunately, there's a chip. Now this one I got off 
on the cross member. This is the Lock Locky High Top 88 USA. This one, I was doing an uh, insulator hunt in Michigan, and I walked by some um, single phase poles, you know, because they put theirs on the cross members. And there was a new cross member on a pole, and it was right next to a lake. And I found the cross member, they had just left it on the ground. And the awesome thing about that was the insulators were there. So um, they just had the new one, they had new ones put on. So this one was there, and unfortunately, it got chipped either from dropping or um, just weather, cold weather. Here's another insulator. Actually, I don't know if this one is a Lockheed. Um, I'm kind of lied, sorry. But <laughs> anyway, this one's really beautiful. As you can see, this one, they had it flipped upside down while it was in the kiln. Here's a couple uh, telegraph insulators, kind of a, of a bigger size. I don't know if they're actually telegraph insulators or not, but very awesome. This one's made by Ohio Brass. It's a beautiful slate, whitish slate color. This one right here is beautiful. This one's made by Pinco. And I believe these ones were um, near a railroad. Some some railroad. I've seen people actually on YouTube. There's a video where they're next to a railroad with some telegraph poles, and they're actually getting those off. So here's a cool insulator. This one takes a big lap, or not? Excuse me, not lap. This one takes the bigger uh, screwing pin. Very awesome. This is probably made for uh, ground wire on some really high voltage stuff. So this would be, um, if you have a three phase high voltage with uh, multi pieces, it'd probably be something that would hold the ground, I would assume. Very awesome. Here, I think this one's an Ohio brass, yep. This is a pretty standard insulator. This one I got off some uh, poles that they were taking down and they just left abandoned. Actually, the poles were abandoned, but um, they were expanding the property, I believe, and they just they were there and knocking them down, so I was able to get them. I don't remember where I got this one at, but this one's a Knox, and I don't know what the W stands for. Hopefully it don't stand for Westinghouse. This one I like a lot because um, the radio treatment on top is a nice brownish, whitish color, which I don't see in a lot of insulators very often, so this one is actually vintage and rare. Here's another one. Um, this one I don't think has an... Oh, yep, it does. This one's made by Lockheed. Very nice. Just kind of your standard insulator. Got a couple more over here, looks like, of these smaller ones. This one's an Ohio Brass. Very awesome. I think this one is also an Ohio Brass. Ooh, as a chip. I don't see the name on it, but anyway, that's okay. But this one right here is an Ohio Brass. You can see the logo kind of blending in with the glaze. This one's nice, has a kind of extended bottom, I think. This one I don't think has a name, but it's very beautiful. Just your standard pin insulator. Move over a little bit, we got ourselves a Thomas insulator. Kind of hard to see, but very nice. Beautiful uh, red color, and I think the bottom probably could be cleaned a little bit more. Keep moving over here, we got a pin co. Logo's right there. This one's also a pin co. Very nice. Over here we got some Chance insulators. These these ones are made by Chance. That one just says Chance. That one just says Chance. This one's also made by Chance, and I think it just says Chance. We got some porcelain product insulators. We got two. This one's this one came off some poles that they were taken down, and then this one I got from I think an insulator show. So this one's darker color, this one's lighter color, red, very beautiful. Now we're over into some more Ohio Brass stuff. Some of these are Ohio Brass, and I think a couple are Ohio Brass silent types. So like, yep, this one's a silent type. Got some more here, sorry it's kind of hard to see. And we get over here. These ones are made by Thomas. These ones are exactly the same, just have a different shade of glaze. All right, now we're gonna jump up. Let's see, you got good battery, yep. Now, here's a lot of the duplicates that I have. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we still got the small ones. Let me skip those two, because uh, they're the same as them. 
Got some McGraw-Edison ones. If you're wondering what ME stands for, that's what it stands for, McGraw-Edison. It's an insulator company. I got one, two, three of those. I think this might be, yep, four. Turn this one. Um, it's hard to see, but it's a porcelain product Knox. Keep moving over here. This one I got off some telegraph poles. This one is made by the Illinois company, which I don't specifically know what their name, but they were made, this one was made in Illinois. Unfortunately, it's chipped, but it's a very beautiful insulator, and it's shown a lot of, uh, shown, shown a lot of beating. But very awesome. Keep going. We got some Victor insulators from 19, let's see, 1999, 1999, and also 1999. Wow. Let's see this one. This one has this one has a name. Now I don't know what this company is yet, but if you guys recognize that, then you can just tell me in the comments. That always helps. Here's an ITE insulator. I don't know what that stands for just yet, but I do know the company. Very awesome. This one came off the same telegraph poles as this one came off of. Just a little bit of information for you. Here's a chance insulator, as you can see, it has the 93 inside the C, which means it's made in 1993. Here's a brand new Victor insulator from 2014, although I got this like last year. <laughs> I don't know, but very beautiful. Hasn't even been used yet. Yeah, so Victor insulators, if you guys are wondering, is still around. They do make insulators still. So this is what their modern logo looks like. And you can see that this is actually made of ceramic, which is an okay material, but I don't really care for it much. This one, made by the... PPC company. This one don't have a date. Um, this one, I know they were putting some poles up, but they temporarily used this new one, and then they kind of scuffed it up and threw it away. So I got out of the dumpster. Pretty awesome. All right, I'm gonna skip on over to here, where we have the skip. So here's some of the bigger size ones, and a lot of the um, a lot of the insulators here are are mostly. Um, a lot, of them, a lot of the insulators you're going to see in this collection are actually from Cincinnati, so um, not very much of them are not from here. Like, there's a couple from Michigan and Ohio and Indiana. So, but here's an Ohio brass silent type. As you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope. I have eight of those in that style, but this one right here is slightly different. You can see the top's different, but it's still an Ohio Brass Silent type. So, I have ten of them, but that one right there is slightly different. Very awesome. And if you're wondering where all these came from, they all came from here. And just a quick note on these insulators. Um, these insulators I've seen in many other states. I've seen them up in Michigan, I've seen them up in Indiana, and I've seen them here in Ohio, and I've seen them in Illinois. So... If you ever, if you're an insulator collector and you've seen this video and you find these insulators, it's okay to take them. But unfortunately, these are very common, so don't, um, don't worry too much about them. I would say, I guess. Um, moving on. So yeah, those are all from here, except this one. This one I got out of a dumpster in Upper Ohio. So got a um, unknown name brand. I don't know what that is. That that one's newer though, which is probably why. Got some other ones. Kind of trying to show you the logo. Here's a PPC, ins uh, PPC insulator from 2001. This one's brand new, hasn't been used yet. Skip over here, we got some uh, modern lap insulators, which are probably from like, I think 2010. So, um, yeah, I, lap still makes insulators, and I know that because a couple, um, no, nah, not a couple years ago, I think uh, a year and a half ago, I'd say, um, they were replacing the substation. And some of the insulators I'm going to show you are from that substation, and um, they were putting in new lap uh, cutout um, switches. So, lap still makes insulators, but these ones aren't as new as those ones that I saw. So these ones were used, just not very long, and you can tell um, they were slightly used because of the slight condition. Got some pretty awesome markings. I guess is that that is their new logo. These two are exactly the same. This one right here is slightly different, and I believe this one's a little older than these, actually. Very awesome. I like how, uh, oh man. 
That one has some uh, damage on the bottom, electrical damage. All right, moving on. These ones are Westinghouse and Slater's. I have one, two, three, four, and we're still at that same size. These ones I got down on some, um, in Tennessee on some poles near some four-parter insulators, which I thought were really awesome. All right, moving on, we got uh, some porcelain product ones. We got one and two right there. Very, very beautiful. Got some locky uh, insulators. Let me pull one up so I can at least show you what the date looks like, and I apologize, it's hard to reach over. Not the date, but the number at least. These ones are pretty common. I don't see too much of them, but um, they are worth collecting if you want to collect them. Got one, two. Moving on over here, we got three Thomas Insulators. Um, this Thomas Insulator came from an insulator collection that someone was selling in um, Illinois at an insulator show that I went to. This one I got up at a dumpster in Ohio. This one I got from some poles up in Michigan. Some really old poles too. So um, this one and this one are sort of the same, but this one we over here it has a thicker top. All right, got another uh, Locky insulator right here. This one I think people might have seen. These ones, um, these ones are very common right here. These Locky ones with the extended base. We have a lot of them here in Ohio. Um, but this one I don't see too, too often. This one right here, very beautiful, has the extended base. It's a Locky R, which is what those are. <laughs> I said R twice. This one's awesome because of its radio treatment. It has that nice brownish, whitish tone. Um, these are, uh, I see these on poles here, and we have some actually on some of the poles um, uh, nearby our subdivision. And uh, but there's not a lot. These ones are quite, I would say, are quite rare. And if you do want to collect insulators and you get find these, I will advise collecting these because these are very amazing. Okay. Got a couple more. These, um, these other ones, they have slightly different tops. Um, this one I got from Upper Ohio. And these two I probably got from here. And I have some more in my collection. So I'm going to start doing some zooming now. All right. Now we're moving on over to some chance insulators. We got two chance insulators, and they were made in 93. Right here, I might have to hop over actually. Let's see. These. I thought these were Victor insulators. Um, that might be, let me see. Sorry, um, here, let me look. Yep. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Anyways, all right, sorry. Sorry about that. These are Victor insulators. We got, um, these ones are from 2000. That was the year I was born, so that was almost 18 years ago. Pretty awesome. They're in great condition. Got a Knox insulator right here. Very thick and nice on top. Moving on over, we have another Knox. Sorry, that terrible camera angle. There we go. There's another Knox. Those are both Knox. We got a porcelain product insulator right there. It says PP, even though it doesn't have an official logo. That one's also a porcelain product right here. Got some more Knox insulators. These ones are also awesome because they have that rare um, radio treatment on the top that I don't see. I have three of those. Right here we have three more porcelain product insulators. Here's a lot of duplicates. These are chance insulators, and I, you probably have seen some of these already in my other videos. I got one, two, three, four, five. Five of those. Moving on, we got a, uh, let's see. CPS, I don't know that brand, but it has CPS insulator right here. Got some porcelain product Knox insulators. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, sorry. Six. Moving on over here, I have some more of those uh, Locky insulators. Now these ones have a different, uh, these ones aren't Locky R's, although they're exactly the same. Um, they have a different name. Actually, they have, this name is the same as the ones 
that you've seen over here. Although these ones have an extended base and these ones are nice. They're bright orange. Really awesome. Over here we have some porcelain product ones from 1955. Got two. Over here we got some more duplicates. These these ones, these three are pincos and a dark glaze and then the ones next to them are white ones and they are also exactly the same but they're just white. And I'll show you what the logo looks like. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, actually. We got nine. <laughs> I thought I was miscounting. Pretty awesome. These Ohio brass silent types and these Pinco ones that you're seeing right here are very common, so don't worry too much about them either, like the Ohio brass silent types. These ones are also Ohio brass silent types. Um, these ones are also super, super common. I think they're at, these ones are more common, though, here in Ohio, so if you go to any other states, they're not common because I've not seen these. But I've gotten eight of these. Moving on over, I believe these ones are made by Chance. Yes, sorry. These ones are made by Chance. I got three Chance insulators here. Those came from here in Cincinnati. These ones are McGraw Edison ones. These ones, um, the McGraw Edison logo is kind of hard to see. It's kind of a, a printed logo, so I can find it for you. No, I cannot. Not right now. But this is what they look like. And I got some McGraw Edison ones up here that kind of look exactly the same. They're just a white glaze. Um, I got another one with a rough glaze on it. And this just helps the uh, grip. Got some more McGraw Edison. Here's a porcelain product insulator. Like these ones are actually down here, but this one just doesn't have a radio treatment. And this one's 1952, so. It's okay. McGraw Edison, McGraw Edison, McGraw Edison, McGraw Edison. These are all just slightly different. Then I have some more Chance insulators. It just has a big Chance logo on it, which I'll show you, but I believe there's nine of those. And the logo on these ones are pretty nice. They're just the words. Uh, that one's not a good example. I have better examples. Here we go. Just this Chance. Very beautiful. These are also very common in a lot of places. Some of them, I, I believe, are from actually a couple other states, but um, most of them I've gotten here. Anyway, that concludes this section. I'm going to jump over here now to some of the um, cutouts and cutout blades that I have. And there's also a couple small things here. I got this pin insulator. This insulator is very amazing. This one's made by Victor. Um, this one has a chip on it on the other side, I think. Or has a chip right there. This one takes a standard pin. Um, these ones right here are actually quite rare, so if you do see these, pick them up. Um, they're not the rarest, but I don't see these very often. Actually, these are kind of rare. They're not as rare as... They're about as rare as the three-parter insulators, so... Um, I would recommend getting them. This is a Telegraph, uh, like, tension insulator. It's just made by Racco. And Racco still makes stuff now. They just make electrical stuff. You can get, like, Home Depot. This is a service insulator. Uh, it has a... Log, uh... A U listing on it. Um, no brand name as far as I'm concerned. Actually, there's a J right here. I would assume then that it's made by Jocelyn. This right here is one of my first in uh, cutout blades I've ever had in my collection, and this thing is super, super hard to open. To open on video. Ah, uh, here we go. Very awesome. I didn't really look at the brand name, but as I can see right here, it says Royal, so I would assume that's who it's made by. And if you're wondering what these look like up on the pole, um, you know, these face upside down, these are just sectional uh, things that turns off sections of the lines. And you just do that to close it. Pretty awesome. I would assume this one's probably from the 80s, um, maybe, or maybe the 70s, late 70s. This one right here also came from one of these. This is just a dark glazed one, and unfortunately the blade that it was on was kind of uh, rusted and broken. This one I think had arcing on it, and I say that because you can see some copper shards that are actually embedded and stuck in the insulator. I can't get them off. So, But this would be the same exact insulator as this, and if I wanted to, I can't. I think I could actually trade this, trade this out with this. So... 
Anyway, moving on, I got some cutouts. This one had an arc. Uh, this plastic thing has to do, I think, with the arcing. Um, that's a triangle cutout, and as you can see by the rubber, this has been struck by lightning because the rubber on this is melted right here. Poor thing. This one right here, brand new cutout. This one's also brand new. These are modern rubber cutouts. And they have cutout fuses, which I have loaded and work. Although they don't have a fuse in them, I put a solid uh, copper rod, so they just technically turn power on and off. So here's another one. This one I think is made by chance, and I believe those ones are made by chance too. If we look real quick, yep, chance. And those are brand new. This one made by chance. This standard cutout. Um, this one takes a very small fuse. Those fuses are a, little, a slight bit longer, so they wouldn't actually fit. But they make fuses for this um, size still. Moving on, we got some more cutouts. My first dark glaze cutout, and these are really rare and hard to find. So if you ever see them taking these down, try to get them. Um, I, I, I would recommend collecting these. These are good to get. Um, this takes a very sophisticated fuse, um, so unfortunately they don't make fuses, I don't think that fit for this anymore, so. And this didn't come with the fuse when I got it, so. Um, good condition other than a minor chip up here. And I don't know who that's made by, I don't have a name. This one's just another chance. Uh, this one don't have anything on it, but this one I think I got from Michigan. Because they were taking some stuff down. Here's some enclosed cutouts that I now have in my collection. These two are made by General Electric, and they got some. It says ME up here. I'm wondering if that has to do with McGraw Edison. Have some ratings. They're very awesome. They're very easy to open. Kind of hard to maneuver the camera when you got a cord. Set this down. This one is very simple. It just opens. You can open it. Sometimes they're very tough. These ones were actually easier to open the other day. Well. I'm going to stop trying to open this one, but anyway, I have another one right here, and this one I think will open up. Here we go. This is what the inner sides look like. This is your fuse, which is not, no longer, um, they no longer make replacements or any aftermarket, and it just slides right in there, just like that, and this is not connected down here, but that's okay. Very awesome. I have another one right here. This one... It's very cool. This one's just, and this one's not really an official cutout. It kind of takes up a majority of the camera. I do apologize. This isn't a cutout. This is just an on and off switch, like those uh, cutout blades we saw over there. So um, it's very simple. And this one is made by Line Material, as you can see by the logo. And I have, uh, I think this may be the only one, but as you can see, this is no fuse. It's just a switch blade. You just pull that out. It's very hard to pull out because of its age, so I do apologize if I'm struggling. Probably could work out too, but... but as you can tell by its age, it's very hard. I just got snapped. Ouch. This is just a metal copper bar, and as you can see, um, what you do is you bring your wires in and you just screw them down on these terminals, and you got a connection. And you can come out on either side too, which is awesome. It's hard to get it back in. Got it. Very awesome, and it's quite heavy too. Yeah. This this one and this one right here. These are made by Westinghouse. They're both exactly the same, other than some differences in the logos and markings. These ones are also. These are just enclosed cutouts too. So. You just got your standard fuse, as you can see right here, and you got your connection terminals in here. And, yeah, if you do see enclosed cutouts, they are kind of common, but they are kind of rare, so I would definitely give them a try and collect them. I have two white ones, the, and then I got the dark glaze one, and this one right here, unfortunately, doesn't have its thing. It didn't come with it. These ones were on some abandoned poles, and these were all the ones that they were taken down. All right, moving on over here to some of my lightning arresters that I've collected, and I've gotten a lot. I didn't have any in the last video, and here's another cutout. This one I got here in Cincinnati. This has an arc thingy on it, and I think this is made by, uh, this I don't know, know the name very well, but it's made by ABB. It also says right here, and I don't know that company very well. 
or anything about it, but anyway. Here's the lightning arrester, pretty awesome. This is made by Cooper. Um, if you're wondering, this company actually um, took over Eagle, and it's it turned into Cooper in the early 2000s. Now it's made, now it's eaten, so they actually have changed again. But this one right here, I actually got in Florida when I went down to Florida last summer, and it's very awesome, little souvenir. This one right here is brand new. It's a little dirty. Very awesome. I think this is a General Electric one. This one's been used, but it's in decent shape. This one's also new. This one's been used. This one's a little older. This one is also made by Cooper. This one right here, I believe, is a General Electric. Actually, this one's a no-namer. No. Nope. This one's made by Jocelyn. I don't know my lightning rusters as well as I should. Sorry about that. That one's made by Jocelyn. So, now this, I think people call it a candlestick cutout, but I call it a candlestick lightning rusher because it's a lightning rusher And it looks like a candlestick because of the way it's shaped, because this is kind of like the flame up here almost. Um, now, these type of lightning rusters, there's more dark glaze ones in this style, so if you do see them taking any of these down, I'm collect them because these are actually extremely rare, the candlestick ones. So try to collect them if you can. I know lots of places in Indiana where I've seen these, but I haven't seen them anywhere else. In dark glaze, I don't see them that very often. But this one I got from here in Cincinnati. This is another lightning arrester, and the cap on this one is actually refurbished, and that's refurbished by me. Um, all I did, it was already black coated, so what I did is I cleaned it really well to spray paint it, and I don't know that company right there, but it's very awesome. All the screw terminals are in good shape, so if you want to reassemble this, I guess you could. So the caps on these are refurbished. Very nice. These are quite common here. Not too common, but a little bit. Here's another one. Very amazing. This one um, has a clamp, apparently, that goes to it, but I don't know where that's at. This beauty right here actually came off the pole in, in our front yard. Um, if any of you watch my uh, Storm account, um, you'll see the pole in our front yard actually has a transformer. And uh, they came by and just replaced the cutouts and lightning arresters because you know that's a maintenance thing they have to do. And it's made by Jocelyn. And this one was actually attached to our transformer out front. So they took it down. I asked them if I could have it, and they said sure. So they just gave it to me. Pretty cool. So, yep. I, that's from our pole in our front yard here. Here's some, uh, I think these are General Electric cutouts, or not cutouts, uh, lightning arresters, yep. These came off the same poles as those came off of, so you see I got two there, two there. Pretty amazing. Moving over here, we got some pin top insulators and some side mounts. But first I'm going to talk about this one. This one is a lap insulator. This one came from Chicago, Illinois, or not Illinois, it's in the Indiana part of Chicago. This one's a LAP 66 made in 1974, and um, these they were just thrown the, threw on the ground with the band and pretty nice. They're on some high voltage stuff. Over here we got some more LAP insulators. These are from some poles here in Ohio. Um, these are side mount ones. And the clamps are missing. The mount wires too. But it says LAP right there. It'll focus. It won't focus. Well, it... here we go. LAP both the same. Jump on back here. Here's a rubber uh, side mount. It's just kind of like a tension insulator. This one came from uh, Coldwater, Michigan, if any of you know where that's at. I don't know who this is made by, but they actually still make these today. And this one is actually really old. This one's from the early 2000s. But I've seen them put brand new ones up. And Coldwater, Michigan's where I used to live, but I live here in Ohio now. So... Here's a Duke Energy insulator from one of their poles here in Cincinnati, but it's not made by Duke, obviously. It's made by uh, Centena, 2003, and the cool thing about this insulator is they actually replaced the pole um, back in, like, 2011, and they replaced it with this. So I'm kind of surprised to see this, but this must have been in their shop for a long time. Here's another pin top, and these are the ones that Duke Energy uses here. So these were all from here in Cincinnati. Um, we got 2010, moving on over to this, NP, I don't know who NP is, by the way. They got 2016, pretty awesome. 
I don't know how old these ones are, but these are made by NJK, and I believe that has to do with Locky. Very cool. And if you're wondering how they mount, they have another piece that screws on under there with a th that has threads that you just mount it to the cross member. So, yep. Alright. Now we move over here to my spool insulators. I got a lot of different types of spool insulators and brackets here. I got Jocelyn bracket right here. This came off a really old pole. Really awesome. You can see one thing that it's developed from rusting is where those pieces of metal is. It's actually rusted down into here. Which is awesome. Awesome, not really, but here's a Westinghouse spool. Um, it's kind of in bad shape, unfortunately, poor thing. These I got from an insulator convention, and they're all dusty. Um, I don't know if these have a brand name on them or not, but I don't think they do. Really cool. These are very, uh, these are like mini spool brackets. These probably go on like really thin poles. They probably don't carry that much load. This one don't have a washer, but same thing. Start right here, we got some more spools. Here's a Jocelyn spool. This one is a no-namer. Really awesome. These I got off some telegraph poles. This one's filthy and I know I gotta clean it. Really awesome spool. These ones don't have names, unfortunately. And these are worth collecting. They're pretty cool. Not, They're not uh, uncommon, but they're cool. Here's another one. And as you can see, they're all different, which I really like. Although I think this one and this one might be exactly the same. And these ones I did take the time to clean up. They're all clean. Here's some Jocelyn spools. We've got a lot of the common ones here. Just common spools, Jocelyn. A majority of them are the same, um, except maybe for this one. This one has double laps on top and bottom. And this one don't. That one's more rounded, but that one has single. Another Jocelyn spool. If we jump over here, we got a Japan spool. And um, I know I have some of these Japan insulators, and I believe... I don't know if these are actually made in Japan, but I think this Japan and logo has to do with Locky. And I've seen some, um, if, if there's an insulator logo website, so I've looked at. So this is technically a Locky insulator, but I just call it a Japan insulator. So one of my first Japan spools I've never had before. Cool insulator, just another spool. Moving on, we got uh, this one right here. I already have one of these too, just so you know, so pretty nice. Standard, doesn't have a name. This is some standard stuff I already have. Another Jocelyn with a spool. And like, and this is from here, and like the ones here, that the thing actually unscrews. Unscrews instead of cotter pin, like every other state has. These three up here also have uh, the screw-in. This one isn't from here, although it doesn't have its sting. But this one, I think, is from Indiana. This one has Kyra pin, so it's pretty standard. These are a little more unique, because they have the thing. I got a, a, hot, a hotline spool right here. This holds hot wires or any other kind of wires you want to hold. Pretty awesome. This one I didn't find or anything, although we have a lot of these here in Dark Glaze. But this one I got from an insulator show in uh, Chicago. That one's cool. This one I think is a brand new one. A lot of these are uh, right here that you're looking at are actually brand new ones that I've gotten out of a dumpster. So this one's 2013. This one's made in China. All standard except for this one. This one's a little older. This one's a double lap one in white. This one probably came off a telegraph pole. That one's 2012, and this one is 2016. All right. And real quick. Uh, this insulator I don't have a name, but this is a substation insulator right here, where um, that they were they were replacing those lap switch blades that I was telling you about earlier in the video. They replaced them with those. Moving on, and those insulators right here are just a higher brass silent types that you've seen, and those glass ones too. Right here, I got some plastic stuff. This may not be the most interesting part of the video, but I do at least like to collect the stuff. These are made by Hendrix, where I think they are. Um, Pretty awesome. They have some rubber material in there, so you can overscrew them if you need to put them in the right, um, face them in the right position. This one right here is a little older. This is from I think uh, the, the mid 2000s. This one is a newer style one right here, and it is made by Hendrix as you can see. 
and it has the same function. Pretty cool. These are both older ones. These ones right here, and that's a newer style on this one is a uh, just plastic spool. These aren't really the most interesting things either. I have actually a lot of those. I think about 10 of them. I may use them for my own project, so that's all right. Moving on down here, I got a couple of plastic telegraph insulators. These things are kind of junky. I don't care too much for them. And that's not good for that. Here's a really awesome tension insulator. This holds high voltage lines. As you can see right here, we got some logoing. There's another logo right here, if I can find it. W or MP, I think it is. I don't know who that is. Very nice. This is for really high voltage. Lay on its side. Here's another one. This one's made by LAP, I believe. LAP. Very cool. This one has grooves in the bottom. And it is really amazing. All right. These are brand new. These are from like a year and a half ago, so they're not very old. Some of this stuff's brand new and some of this stuff is used. Oh, let me fix this cord real quick, sorry. Got some rubber insulators. I have a standard one with uh, six, six uh, laps. This one. This one's an interesting one. This is a rare find right here. This one just has uh, the end, those ends extended. It's an extended, just standard four. This one has eight. Um, the laps are very short and thin. This one also has, uh, this is the ones that Duke Energy uses here, so I've gotten some of these. Some of them, um, there's a couple of these that are new. I think this one's new, and then these two are used. They're all very dirty, though. Um, very awesome. These ones are from, I think, the 90s right here. Um, you can see the rubber's kind of, uh, definitely seen better days, maybe. And they're starting to kind of develop that rust. This one right here is from the 80s. This is really, really old. And if you, if you get this insulator right here wet, it absorbs water, so technically this isn't an insulator anymore. But the cool thing, at least about this one, is that it is made by chance. Really cool. So this insulator is not a good, this insulator is not a good insulator. I wouldn't reuse it. I see places reuse these sometimes, but that's just probably if they're not like this one right here. Um, I got some more of the five lapped ones right here. These are um, these ones were kind of used, but these are new style. These are the new style ones that they use nowadays with the five laps. Um, these are very common in lots of states. They use them in up. They use them in Ohio. They use them in Illinois. They use them in Michigan and in Indiana. And I don't see them use them in Kentucky. They use different stuff there. But I live next to Kentucky, so I would know. This one's brand new, pretty awesome, just standard four lapped one, new style. Um, this one, some more, these are a little older. These ones are from like uh, the little 90s. These ones uh, kind of have a weird layer too. Got some new ones, some used ones, all right here. This one is also a four lapped one. This one's from the early 2000s and this one has some very thick rubber and the laps are very wide. So, really cool. Here's some bell insulators I have. I have a lot more outside that I'm going to show you, but I will at least show you the ones here. This one's Victor, 1951. That's actually the year my dad was born. And this one is an Ohio Brass. It says 5.9. I believe that says 59. Or that means 59. Made 1959. And I have more of these outside I'll show you. But I got some triple spool brackets here. Um, those are standard spools. and. There's not too much to the style, just the styles are slightly different. This style right here on this one is one that I see all the time here in Cincinnati, so they're very common. I'm going to skip those and save those for last, because those are special. Alright, moving on over here, we got some of my multi-piece insulators. Most of them are from here in Cincinnati, and a few of them are not from this area. This one right here, which I'll start with, is the most interesting one. I got this out of a dumpster. This one is made in, was made in 1930, and this is made by Lap Insulators. It's very beautiful, and these are really rare insulators, so um, I'm probably not going to get, most likely never going to get rid of that insulator. This one's an Ohio Brass Silent Type, right here, and I've, it's the same as the ones from my last video, so 
This one's a Pinco Insulator. This one, unfortunately, has suffered great da electrical damage. And if you look right here, there's the logo, which is covered up. And I do need to be careful, because some of this stuff actually is extremely sharp and can uh, hurt me. So, this, I don't know if that's lightning damage or not, but it's very bad electrical damage. And you can see it's, it's more stress right there. It's heat stress. Yeah, that's definitely heat stress. Anyway, another Ohio Brass Silent Type Insulator in white. That one, I think, is a Pinco if I turn it. It's cut off, but it's made by Pinco, and it says 72. No, 73, so that may have been made in 73 right there. That's a Locky Insulator with some chipping. Um, that one don't have a name. That one's, uh, I don't know how old that one is. It's probably from, like, the 50s, though. Or the 40s. That's another Locky, and then that one is a Thomas Insulator, I believe. And this one came off some poles in Michigan. Yes, Thomas, and it says 62 right there. So that I think this one could have been made in 62. All right, now I'm going to jump down over to here, and we'll move up to some of my three-parters. And if you have seen one of my videos where I've went insulator hunting, that is one of the three-parters I got and described in the last video. Right here, these are all from some really old poles from here in Cincinnati. And that one is two right there. These are all high brass, except for this one. This one is a Lockheed insulator. And the cool thing about the logo is it has a has the multi-piece insulator logo right here. Very awesome. These ones um, were very, 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 very filthy. And these ones had so much yucky soot and stuff on them. You actually couldn't see the color they were. Like, they were all black. And, like, when I uncovered them, I found out that um, this one was orange. Or actually, it's not orange. It's brown. These ones were different colors. So, the, these ones are, like, a blackish uh, color. The And this one is, too. These two are more of the uh, blackish olive. That one right there, that one I got from a different collection. But that one... Um, just has the bottoms different, the screw and pins different, but the shape's the same in this Ohio brass. That one's an olive color. This one's a reddish, blackish color, and then this one, of course, was a brown. So even though all of these are the same, they have their slight differences. And then that one's just red. Moving on, we got a Locky insulator. This one I got from a thrift shop. Very awesome. People call these ones like pumpkin insulators, and I don't really like that name, but it makes sense, I guess, because of the way they look. This one I got from an insulator show, and this one only has one lap under it, and it takes a big pin. That one's made by Thomas. Now we got some of the newer ones. Most of these I've gotten by myself from some abandoned stuff, and some of them I just got brand new. So like this one, I don't know what that brand name says. I think it says PP, though. Actually, no, that's a, I believe that's a W. That could be a Westinghouse. Anyway, I have a couple of these. I got one, two, and I, that might be another one right here. No, that's actually a different one. ICB, that one's 2002. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who that company is. But this one came off that lakeside hunt, like when I found that Locky Insulator. So those are both on the same cross member. Although that one had a, the top broken off. So I went ahead and did a patchwork, and I repaired it. And you can still see the crack, but it looks pretty good. And you can pick it up, too, from the top. This one right here is a lap insulator. This, and these ones are, are all from Michigan, except for those two. Those ones did not come from Michigan. So that one's a lap insulator. That one says 1988. Pretty awesome. I like how the, the top looks on it, too. Uh, the logo on that one's messed up, but I think we already looked at that one. This one I think is made by a Santana. Yep. This one's really awesome. I like how the logo on it's a blue print, light blue, and it's made in Brazil. But it was made in 1996. And it's not exactly white. The whitish is a little bit tanner than the other ones. Um, moving on over here. Um, this this one and that one are both the same. It's just another lap insulator. Here's another one. This one is also made by Santana. This one was made in 2007, and this one is looking pretty fine. Pretty standard, though. Um, over here, this one right here is uh, brand new, but used. Pick it up. 
This one's 2015. They were throwing down some more poles, and then I found this guy just laying there. Pretty cool. And you can tell it's been used because it's scratched. Over here we got some PPC insulators. These were made in 2001, although I got these brand new from some guys back in like uh, 2017. So I, that I don't understand, but very awesome. I really love them. And those are the biggest size pin insulators you're probably going to ever find. Um, other than the fog bone insulator that I was looking at, that looks similar to these in the last video I did. If you want to go check that out, you can. Over here we have a three-parter uh, Locky insulator. This I got from an insulator show just after I did my second video, so that was my first one. And the logo on it's really cool. This three-parter, if you wanted to know a little more about it, um, you can watch it. Uh, that one video I did, uh, insulator vlog. Um, this one was uh, broken, but it broke in chunks, so I repaired it, and it looks great and good as new. This one I got from Michigan, awesome poles. And these are rare, so if you ever see these, collect them. They're very rare, hard to find. They're not common. Got some of these right here. If you've seen my last video, I had some of the Ohio brass ones with the multiple logos. These ones are brand new. Now, I got these on the way back from Texas, so these are actually from Texas. But, uh... These were made in 2011, and the poles that these were on were abandoned, so they were just on the ground doing nothing. They're both the same. Very awesome. This one I got from an insulator show. Pretty cool. Um, I don't have a name, but it is in perfect condition. I think it is. Yeah. I don't feel any chips. The one that was over there, this one and this one came from the same show, and I think that one had the chip. Here's some more substation insulators right here. This one's made by Pinco, 1963. Very awesome. It has auto laps under it too. This one I don't think has a name, but um, I accidentally dropped this one and I broke it. So um, when I get done with this video, it's gonna be thrown away. Um, I picked it up by this and it slammed on its side. So this broke and then that came off and it shattered in a lot of pieces so that one isn't repairable like the three-parter over there because if it, if it broke in chunks I would glue it be able to just glue it but it broke and shattered in tiny bits in some spots so that one's non-repairable but moving on got my tension insulators over here this one I got in Corpus Christi Texas which is um, where they had a lot of the bad um, storms and uh, what is it, Hurricane Harvey? This one was on a pole that they had just left behind, made by the ABC company, which I don't know who that is. They must sing the ABCs. Ha ha ha. Sorry for that terrible, terrible joke. Got some more attention insulators. Um, a lot of these are made by Pinco, and some of them, uh, uh, this guy right here, I think you've seen before. Um, this is from the first video. I don't know why I have him here. That's, that was uh, by GPC, which is a telegraph uh, company that made telegraph insulators way long ago. So that one's over like 100 years old. But, um, yeah, I got a lot of really cool styles here. Some of them were used on tension lines, and some of them were used as uh, um, dead-end insulators, like the ones you'll be seeing um, in just a minute. This one over here came off some poles here. This one's made by Knox. It's very beautiful, uh, just plain color. Anyway, moving on, um, you've seen this insulator before, but I have obtained another one right here. This one is not a substation insulator, this is a side mount, but the one that you see right here is a substation insulator, and this one is made by Ohio Brass, and unfortunately I don't like care for that Ohio Brass logo that's on the top left corner, but I like the one with the circle. Very amazing, this one has some chipping, they threw this in the dumpster and this was so heavy and hard to get out but I, I managed to get it, so. And there's a yellow thing on there, it says Danger on the other side. Yeah, see Duke Energy? Duke Energy is the company here. And I'm probably gonna go work for him. And this one has Super Mario. So these are both Ohio Brass insulators, but this one is the new one that I got. And if you wanna see more about that one, you can watch the other video. All right, now let's look at my bell insulators. Now, there's a lot of duplicates in here, so like the uh, pin insulators, I'll go over them quickly. Um, let's see. All of these up here, which I have, uh, I think, let's see. 
I got nine, ten, yeah, so I got twelve of these. No, eleven, sorry. Ten, eleven, yeah. These are Ohio brass insulators. These are made from in 1961. Um, they're very awesome. Some of them are from here and some of them aren't. That one just has the logo and some other markings on them. There's a couple in here that also have the dates, such as uh, this one right here. It says 1961. It's just a beautiful orange color. And, a lot, and none of these have damage, of, um, electrical damage of any sort, so they're actually in very nice shape. Which I'm surprised I wouldn't reuse them. Here's some that I have paired up. Those don't have the number on them. Um, there's another one with a 1961 logo, except it's instead of it being embossed, it's actually or imprinted. Excuse me, it's actually embossed. But I can't seem to find that one. Okay, since I can't find it, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Up here on the front, we got four beautiful lap insulators. This one right here, which just says lap, and it says how many pounds it can handle. Um, I got that from an insulator show. Someone just gave it to me. These, I got off some poles that were being thrown away um, here in Ohio. This one's from 1931. Very awesome. These are around when the Great Depression happened, so these would definitely be worth collecting. Here's another 1931 insulator. This one's slightly different than this one. This one's thicker than this one. We got this one right here. This one was made in 1936, so this was definitely in the mid uh, Great Depression. Very awesome. I love those. We got a porcelain product insulator right here, and this one's a rare find. This one has a hook instead of a, a, a standard uh, circle where you just put the cotter pin through. Here's the porcelain product logo. Porcelain product ink. Very thick insulator. Um, how they would tie it on is they'd just loop the wire around and clamp it at the end and it would just hang, which is not a good, uh, which is not gonna, not a good design, but, um, that's what they did when that was put up. And there's lots of them here in Ohio, so, yep, these are, um, rare ones that you definitely want to collect if you see a, <clears throat> excuse me, got a locking insulator, this one is from, uh, from Indiana, this one's from 1955. That's pretty standard. Has a nice thick ring, which is very strong. This one I got from another insulator show, and this one's cool. Um, there's lots of these up in Detroit and Michigan. This one was made in September the 15th, 1914. So this one is over 100 years old. It's about uh, 14 years old, actually. No, 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 excuse me. It's 104 years old. So this insulator is nice, and surprisingly for its age, I don't know why, if this is just a newer piece of equipment than the insulator, but this metal part's not terribly rusty. But who knows? It could be stainless steel. Right here we got Thomas insulator. This one has two logos. This one says 1954, and under it, it actually has an imprinted logo saying Thomas 54. So that's pretty cool. Right here, I think these are more porcelain product ones. Yep, some porcelain product insulators and a nice shade of red. They're pretty standard. And they have a printed logo too. It's just 1951. Very awesome. Uh oh, my hand's caught. There we go. I'm scooting over a slight bit. I got. Ten of these Pinco insulators, and some are from here, and some are from Indiana. Some have a printing that's like this, and they, and just so you know, they are made exactly the same, other than the printing. So the print, some of the prints are different. Here's the one from Indiana. The ones from Indiana have these prints. They're all very awesome. Um, I don't know why they don't reuse them, but I think see all that rust probably makes it more conductive in that spot, so it could be dangerous. Although you can clean that. Anyway, moving on over here, those are some of the bells from my first video. Uh, right here, I got a lot of cool insulators. Um, here's some Ohio brass ones. That one's that logo I don't care much about, but these ones have lightning damage. If I do a giveaway or sell online, I'll probably sell these ones. Um, 
And one quick tip too, if you can actually, if they made a material that would actually get this glaze layer off, because see, this is actually the original clay. If you really wanted to, you could get some new glaze and put on them. If you get all the old glaze off and re um, cook these in the kiln, you could have your own custom colored insulator. Just thought I'd mention that. Um, some more Ohio brass ones right here. These ones have the standard um, OB logo. These are from, I think, Tennessee, these ones, but these ones are very common, so um, don't worry too much about them. These ones are made by Lockie. It doesn't specifically say Lockie, but, well, it says right here. It's hard to see, but they got printing if you can't see right away. Those are Lockie insulators. These ones are really awesome. Um, some of these are Victor insulators, and I'm going to set them up on their sides because a lot of them actually have different dates, even though they came from the same exact set of poles right near each other. So let me set them up. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. This Victor was made in 1997. This one right here is 1998. This one right here is also 1997, and then this one right here is 1999. Moving on, we got some porcelain product Knox. It even says right up here on the side, I got three of them. One, two, three. Jump down, we got some, uh, I think these are more porcelain product Knox. Actually, you know, to be honest, these ones don't have a name, do they? But these are your standard uh, modern style bells. These ones are porcelain product Knox right here. Except for these two. These these two sets, I don't know who they're from, but this one right here, these are porcelain product Knox. And if you actually turn them around, sometimes they'll have a date. That one don't have it, but this one does. These ones right here do have a date. These were made in the 80s. Very first beginning of the 80s. So were these. Moving up, I got some more of those not no name insulators. I have a, a Victor insulator right here that was made, I believe, in 2003. Yep, 2003. Pretty awesome. Those came from some poles in Indiana. If if I were the uh, lineman boss, I would tell them to put that back up if they could, because that's a good insulator. This one right here also came from Corpus Crispy. This was on some more abandoned poles from the hurricane. And this one was uh, made in the 60s, so I could find out where the thing is. And this one's made by Chance. And this is one of the first dark glazed uh, modern style bells I have. Chance, 1963. And if you notice something about this insulator, there's no rust on it. Because a lot of the ones here from the 60s have tons of rust on them. But the reason why this one right here doesn't have rust on them is because this one was from, was down far in the south, and they don't only get a lot of rain in sunny weather. So they don't have the bad weather up here in the north like we do to get to um, obtain a lot of rust. So this insulator is in great condition, but it still shows its signs of wear and tear. Like there's some scuffing. There's actually a lot of scuffing, and you can't see it very well. But there's a lot of scuffing, and that was probably from all the wind and uh, debris that was flying in. There's some cracking. And this one was just holding up a service line, so this one wasn't actually holding up a hot line. But very awesome, glad to have them. And if you do ever see them taking those down, collect them, because those are rare. Except in Illinois, they're very common, but there's um, various um, shapes of these insulators that I have discovered in Illinois that are different than a lot of the ones. So if you're going to collect these ones right here, I would recommend getting them, because those are a lot, um, there's a lot more interesting shapes. There's some with very thick bases and very skinny uh, uh, ceramic components or, you know, like the porcelain parts, like very smallly molded. And there's some with very thin bases and uh, very thick. And then there's actually one size up from this, which is hard to find too. So click these uh, modern style bells if you can. They're very special. All right. So we've covered the inside part. Oh, one insulator I forgot to talk about too real quick. I'll just jump over is this one. And that's an elephant ear insulator that I got with that one. But um, I talk about it in the other video. So if you want to get good information on that, I'd recommend watching. But anyway, we're not done just yet, but we're done inside. I have some more stuff outside that I got to show you. So if we move on out here, I got a cutout right here. Very thick. It doesn't, I don't know if it has a name on it. Got some more of those spool insulators from here. This one's from Indiana, and that one's a new one. Except for the bracket, I don't know why that came with it, but that one's brand new plastic. 
got some spool brackets. The one on the uh, left is different than the other two. Very awesome. Got more cutouts. These are all chance cutouts and they're all exactly the same other than slight differences with the connection points as you can see. Now we're going to move on over to my big bells that I have out here. And some of these might be up for sale so I'm definitely stay on topic on, on, on with that. A lot of them are the same so all these white ones are made by Locky and as you can see here it says Locky and they were taking down some tower uh, transmission lines in the countryside out in Indiana and I went ahead and got these because they were just laying all over the place. So that one's also a Locky. Those are some 1961 Ohio brass ones you can see a logo right there and you can see Ohio brass those are also the same. Uh, these ones right here, and they got a uh, paint splatter, aluminum splatter on them from something. These are also made by Locky. Very nice. And all the way back there. And some of them actually have, and I can't show you, show them to you, but they have the multi-piece uh, logo on them, which is really cool. Locky logo. Those two back there are also Locky ones. Uh, going to the end. Uh, scooting on scooting on over to those ones uh, those ones those two I think are pin codes. these two may um, are also pin codes right here and they're kind of hard to show that one is a lap insulator that one is also uh, let me see so uh, that one's a lap insulator too that one's an Ohio brass and these ones are Ohio brass also and the logo is right here that one's an Ohio Brass logo, and it has a special uh, Ohio Brass logo on it. That one right here is a Locky, differently shaped, and that one behind there is an Ohio Brass and Dark Glaze. Those two are Ohio Brass and Dark Glaze, and those three, um, those two are Pinkos, and then that one on the end is a Locky. Uh, moving up here, I got some more. These are some Thomas Spells. It's upside down, but it's made in 1956. All three of these are Thomas. These are lap insulator bells right here, 2005, and it's kind of cool that they're from 2005 because you don't see this color very often being used. So these are a little newer. Got some more Locky insulators, and th this is from 19. These are from 1963. Very well printed logos too. I wish they could all be that way. Got another set of three. Here's some Ohio brass ones, and they have a very thick logo. It says 66 on there. I think that's the year they were made. Got some more 1961 orange bells. These are uh, lap insulators. Here's the logo right here. Got some more pincos right here. Logo is right there. Made in 1951. And I got two more Ohio brass silent type multi pieces out here. Um, I don't know when those were made, but they don't have the uh, things off them yet. So. So finally, I'm going to get over to these ones right here. This is a special bundle right here. As you can see, I got some glass ones, and I apologize if I don't collect a lot of glass, but there's a lot of common glass. Um, these are simple uh, Hemingway 512s right here. This one, I think, is a uh, Hemingway. This one's 1993, or excuse me, 1893, so this thing is way over 100 years old. This is made by Hemingway. Got another Hemingway. 510, oops, my bad, Hemingway 20, right here, and that's it for the glass, moving on over, here we have some fog bowls that I've gotten, and I got these from an insulator show, now both of these have technically the same exact shape, but the only difference is who they're made by, this is made by the, IE, uh, the IATE company, and then this one right here is made by Ohio Brass, and if you want to find these insulators, um, I would recommend going to Chicago because that's where these are from. But um, there's some other states too that have insulators like this. Um, down in the south, south part of Texas, you'll see a lot of fog bowls all have these insulators. So I would assume that maybe you'll find this brand down here, but not the Ohio brass because Texas and Ohio are quite far from each other. But those would be good places to look, especially after the hurricane. There's probably a lot of down stuff still lying around. Right here, I think this might be some type of an antenna insulator. This one's made by Pinco, and it has a cool, like, star-type shape. It's very awesome. 
this one right here. Um, let's see. I don't know what this insulator was used for, but uh, it doesn't have any name on it. Anyway, it's really cool. It's like a diamond shape. Very awesome. Now, last but not least, my blue insulators I got. Um, now, this and this may look the same, but they are slightly different. This is kind of a slatish blue. Although, those are kind of a slatish blue, too, but um, this is an Ohio brass insulator, and it says uh, 82 right there, which might mean that it was made 82, but who knows. Very awesome. Got some blue insulators. This insulator is, let me find the logo right here. It's hard to see, but this one is made was made in 1965, and this was made by Line Material. And when I got those plastic insulators right there, those pin ones, um, they also gave me this, some linemen. So that was really awesome, and I thank them very much. And I don't understand why they gave me this insulator, but this insulator came from the Ann Arbor, Michigan area. So, very awesome. Glad to have that in my collection. These ones I got from a show. So this one's a lot more awesome than uh, these ones. But this one's a lap insulator. Uh, this one doesn't really have a logo on it. I know it has some drippies on it. Sorry about that. It has it has a logo, but doesn't have like the year. It just says 60, um, 6189 or 80 actually. And I think that's a specific uh, uh, mold number because I've seen that on some others. Uh, this one has a marking up here, like a zero, but this does have a company name. This one's made by Porcelain Products, and this one was made in 1954. Really cool. This one's really awesome. This one is made by Pinco, although I can't find the name. It's hard to find. Oh no, wait, this isn't made by Pinco. This is made by Lap, sorry. It's right here, and I don't know if you can see it, but it says lap. Very awesome. I'm sorry for misleading you guys. I don't know if this Telegraph insulator has uh, a logo or not, but this one's a nice blue one. The person I got these from had a lot of these, so I just grabbed each individual one. This one's made by IEP, and I have obviously shown you one over there that's in like a brown color, and this one was made in 1955. And I don't know why blue insulators were made, but if you guys want to tell me down in the comments why they made these colors, that would be cool. There's a yellow insulator that I'm going to get that's uh, made by Locky in this size, so that's on a pole that I'm going to go find. So, it's really awesome. I can't wait to get that, and maybe you'll see that in my next video I do sometime in the future. But anyway, this possible sale I might do. Um, just keep up to date with that. Um, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know which one of the two I'm going to do. But if you want some insulators, definitely subscribe so you can get information on that because there's a lot of insulators here that I will be selling. So anyway, this is the Angry Birds Freeze King slash Modern Insulator Collector out.